Hi everyone, welcome to the Menzies School of Health Research podcast series for the NT Youth Health Summit initiative called Youth Choices, Youth Voices, where we aim to hear from young people and specialists about youth health priorities in the NT. A special shout out to our sponsors for this event, including Hot North, CDU, the Northern Territory Government, NTPHN, Bridging the Gap, Ironbark Corporation and Charter Air. I'm Letitia Jeffrey, and today on episode 15, I'll be having a chat with young Territorian Edmund Dolan, who works at Children's Ground in Alice Springs. Edmund Dolan is 22 years old and an Ardender man. He's family to Duane Houston Turner, star of NT documentary In My Blood It Runs. Edmund had a similar experience growing up and could easily have ended up on the wrong side of the law and getting mocked up. The turning point for Edmund was a conversation with his older cousin, who was working at Children's Ground. Edmund now works at Children's Ground in the men's and youth program. And through his work at Children's Ground, Edmund has been working alongside families, supporting early years learning, ensuring kids are growing up with a strong identity and connected to their land, language and culture, which is something he is very passionate about. Edward, Edmund would talk to his own goals, both personal and professional, and what he wants to see himself and his younger siblings in the future doing. So welcome to the podcast, Edmund, and thank you so much for joining me. And how are you today? Good, thank you. How are you? I'm very good. And I'm very keen that we have you on here today as well. And um, so we'll just get straight into it. So tell us a bit about yourself and your experience growing up in Alice Springs. Living in Alice Springs for a while. And then like just moved out about 2012 when I was just nearly going to my primary areas. Like I was living out at Bush and now a station called Sunny Ball and just having a 10 school, really just been living at Bush. And yeah, it was hard for us getting into town. And there was some like school that I attended at Bush. So it was just an out station. Yeah. And yeah. And as I moved, as I grew through my primary age, we moved into town and I started going to school at, at Yeprinya. Yeah. And when I, when I used to go to Yeprinya, um, there was like different language groups everywhere at Yeprinya, like different language groups and like, it was hard because me, and my younger siblings just used to get into fights. So yeah. From there, like after you bring out, we moved moved to Bradshaw Primary School. And from Bradshaw, like there's people that I knew and families that went there. Like I felt like more connected with them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's and, and then, then what was the rest of your schooling? What did it look like? And then the rest of my schooling, like from there, um as I as I was um just before graduation, um we moved up at the top end. So I didn't have my graduation here at Bradshaw in Alice Springs. So I never graduate primary or anything. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, because it was hard because we moved, moved to the top end, like after my graduation. Yeah. Uh, before and my what, graduation, sorry. Yeah, what grade was that? Do you remember? Um, going into um, secondary, I mean, yeah. high school. Yeah. Like, so like yeah. nine, year ten, yeah. Yeah, yeah, nine, ten, like going up to there, then. and like from there, like just we moved up at the top end, up in Mangrela, and then stayed there for like three years. Yeah. And yeah, when I was up there, it was like pretty hard too for me and my younger siblings because we used to get into fights there as well. And there's like people that we don't know up in the top end. Yeah. And how many yeah, younger siblings do you have? 
Four. Four. And um, your eldest? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and earlier in the introduction, I spoke about that you could have been locked up and because you were getting on the wrong side of the law. And what do you think guided you away from that path? Like, what happened? Um, for me, it's my um, my older cousin, who we I used to sit down with. Like, every time we like sit down and have a little story conversation. And he just brings up what he'd done in the past and, and like tells told us like what he did in the past and like getting all these like mistakes like trying to like get us on track like guide yeah. us and so we, we don't have to fall off track like he did yeah because he like all the things that he did before like it was things that he regret and he didn't want us to like go through those things that he done. Yeah. Like breaking in. And just, yeah, just getting in trouble with the court. I was on that track as well until like we sat down with him. Yeah. Yeah. And that's and he, really good. He got, yeah. Like, he, he got um like a couple of us young fellas like when we were sitting down and then he just got us and said use like you don't want to want to do this thing like things that I did before in the past like he he seen us going through tough times like breaking in I've been in trouble with the court yeah with the police and like it's hard to get out of that trouble. And yeah, like after sitting down with him, just gives us, give me a, gave me a clear, clear path where I should go, you know? Yeah. And like, I look, looked at my younger siblings and thought that I don't want to be, be this bad person for them, you know? Like, doing bad things, making wrong yeah. decisions. I want, I want them to look up to me, like how I looked up to my older cousin. Yeah. And I was like. Yeah, that's really good. Just I love Speak literally <laughs> like the way he talks to us. Yeah. And what advice would you now give to young people who might be getting in trouble with the law or not achieving at school and not wanting or not even wanting to go to school? So what would you what would you say to our young people? Just keep your head up. Keep going to school. Don't make wrong decisions. Don't be a follower, be a leader. And yeah, for the young people out there, keep your head up. Go to school every day. And get your vaccine shot so we can keep doing the keep doing and playing the sports we love and the and the work we do at every organization. Yes. Color. Love it. And um you mentioned uh like so you've already mentioned the turning point in your life and that where your older cousin provided you some advice. And, but how important do you think it is to have good mentors and people, you know, a good support for a young person? Like mentors are very important because they're always there, support you, and they never judge you for who you are, where you come from, or what you did before in the past. It's just that someone who just helps you and... just supports you in every way. Yeah. Whenever you're struggling, whenever you're feeling down. Yeah. That and it definitely sounds mental. like, yeah, your cousin did have and that amazing impact on you, but it doesn't take away from, because there's always people that have mentors, but then it's what you did as well to turn your life around, you know, for your younger siblings. So you then became a mentor yourself. 
you know, in that program, um, in that process. And now you work at Children's Ground. And can you tell us some of the things that you do? Like, what do you do for work? For me, um, I organize and develop program activities for the men's and youth program, like camp or consolations or or what we consolations like what we call walk and talk like go with families and talk with them and walk with them you know yeah yeah and vehicle thing maintenance and general support around the office and just collect and report on health data within the health and well-being team yeah sounds that's amazing and yeah. and that's why it's been so hard for me to get an interview with you because you've been out bush <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know, running all these yeah. amazing programs and um yeah. what do you what do you hope to achieve through your work and why is it important for young people just like yourself working with you know working with other young people for me i want to achieve is develop and gain more skills professionally in my role here and like to and one day I'll, I'd like to become a team leader and take more more leadership and response and more role and responsibilities yeah yeah yeah, it sounds um, really good. And it, yeah. it sounds like it could be stressful too. Yeah, and just trying to get professional, professional, professional development. qualification. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, um, yeah and then just help, help kids keep their language and culture strong. That's, that's really what, good. And that's really that's what I want to be like just to help people and support. And I like how you talk about your own education as well, because it's, you know, it's important. Schools, you know, school's there, we go through school and then it's constantly wanting to get better and learn new things. Like, I think it's amazing as adults to continue learning because we know the world around us is just continuing to change. So there is so much yeah. more that we can learn and give back to our communities, our people and our families as well. Um, so what do you do outside of work to maintain a healthy balance? And, you know, obviously it can get kind of stressful and what advice would you give, you know, to other young people as well? Um, for me, like, when I'm feeling down, when I'm feeling stressed, for me, I listen to music, like a music, like a chill beat that keeps you chill. Yeah. Or uh, go out bush, spend the day at bush or camp. Keep keep away from towns and get your mind cleared out there. You know, yeah. like out at bush is less distraction. No cars, no noise. It's just the birds, wind, sound, peace. Yes. And even when you're not at bush. You got your little, little brothers and sisters just, just playing around. Just be there, play with them. You'll get a good energy out of them too. Yeah. Like babies, they can keep your energy going yes. as well. Yeah. So back at home, I just play with those little kids. And yeah. It just makes me feel good about myself. Yeah. And so I can completely understand. I'm from a big family as well, and I love it. <laughs> Going to get my baby fixes all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, would you like to add any other messages to our young people before we finish this? Um, yeah, for all you young people out there, just... Keep doing what you're doing, keep your head up. Don't fall off track, just keep going on that path you're on. 
you know, that's life's complicated, that's ups and downs, but keep your head up and keep going with life. Yeah. And thank you so much, Edmund. And that was the 15th episode of our Menzies School of Health Research podcast series for the NT Youth Health Summit initiative called Youth Choices, Youth Voices. And it's always so inspiring to hear what young people, services and health research professionals in Australia are doing to make a difference to young people's health and well-being. And it's great to hear about, you know, the importance of listening and engaging with young people. And thank you again, Edmund. I really appreciate it. Thank you. If you can, please support the Youth Health Summit initiative by getting in touch via the Menzies School of Health Research website. Thank you for listening. Please join us again next time.